Welcome to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and review show. This time we're taking a look at the latest concept car from Audi, the Urban Sphere. We also have a new special edition hot hatch from above and the new electric Ford Transit. Plus the new Hyundai Palisade, a premium van-based MPV from Mercedes and the one you've been waiting for, BMW's new 7 Series. That's all coming up, but first, the news. Ford has announced the start of F-150 Lightning production at its Rouge Electric Vehicle Center in Detroit. Ford's first electric pickup truck already has 200,000 reservations, with Ford planning to build 150,000 units annually. The brand's CEO, Jim Farley, also confirmed that another electric truck will enter production in 2024 in a Ford facility in Tennessee. Likely to be based on the popular new Maverick, it comes as part of Farley's plan to become the market leader in electric trucks. The daily commute is far from the most enticing part of vehicle ownership, as such manufacturers have long been looking to ease the boredom with autonomous vehicles. The Audi Urban Sphere is the latest concept car aiming to eradicate the stress of commuting. With its plush interior, Audi claims the new model acts as a lounge on wheels. At 5.5 metres long and 2 metres tall, the Urban Sphere is the largest Audi concept car to date. So comparing it to an entire room is far from inaccurate. Instead of cramming the space with chairs, the Urban Sphere seats just four people, each of which can benefit from ample legroom. Made using recycled materials, they cater to both the social and the not so inclined. Privacy screens and speakers mounted to the headrests ensure occupants can have a bit of alone time, while a large LED screen can be dropped down from the ceiling so those in the back seats can enjoy the latest episode of Auto Mundial. The elegant wood dashboard can instantly become a screen thanks to projectors. The swooping panel lining the edge of the cabin also hides the steering wheel when the car is put into its level 4 autonomous driving mode. To the side of the front seats are control elements that Audi is calling the MMI touchless response. When the seat is in its standard position, the occupant can easily toggle through settings using the circular dial. Though when reclined, it could get a bit trickier to reach the control unit. To combat the issue, the Urban Sphere uses eye tracking technology. Step out of the luxurious interior and you'll be greeted with a light show to rival any New Year's celebration. Being an EV, the front grille is mainly for show, but it's great canvas for the array of LEDs. A similar display is located at the back of the car with the illuminated Four Rings logo spilling into an enlarged light bar. Level 4 autonomous vehicles are being tested around the world and whispers suggest they could be a mainstay of the car market as soon as next year. Until then, concepts like these remain a dream of the more imaginative car designers. The Mercedes V-Class has long been one of the most desirable MPVs on the market. It may be based on a van, but when filled with reclining seats and S-Class gadgets, it becomes one of the nicest ways to be shuttled to and from an airport. There's even a congestion charge busting electric one, meaning the V-Class is still as popular as ever. Now though, Merck has a new, more compact alternative, the T-Class. Replacing the old Saitan, the T-Class is a small van-based MPV rivaling the likes of the VW Caddy and Ford Tornio Connect. But while those two offer an affordable way to carry seven people in a van, Mercedes is pitching the T-Class as an altogether more premium alternative. 
Even without a three-pointed star in the front, it would be easy to mark this out as a very posh MPV. The clean lines and modern lights do a good job of distracting from its van proportions. It's dressed up from its commercial sibling with fancier paint and trim options, as well as diamond-cut alloy wheels. It does retain the sliding doors, though, making this a very handy car for loading and unloading in tight spaces. At the back, the T-Class is available with either a hatch or two asymmetric barn doors. Step inside, and its commercial vehicle routes are abundantly obvious. There's no vast panel of screens here, and there's an awful lot of textured plastic on show. It's not exactly an S-Class then, but it is available with man-made leather and various other creature comforts. There's a modestly sized infotainment system which does look a little last gen, some fancy ambient lighting and those familiar turbine air vents. The key to this car's appeal though is its practicality. There's loads of space for all passengers thanks to the high roof line. From launch, the T-Class will be offered with five seats only, but Merck has confirmed a longer wheelbase seven-seater will arrive later this year. And while rivals like the VW Caddy require you to remove the back seats for extra cargo space, in the Mercedes you can simply fold the rear bench into the floor. Under the bonnet, the T-Class is offered with a choice of two petrol and two diesel engines, all with front-wheel drive. The range starts with the 94 brake horsepower 160D and tops out with the 129 brake horsepower 180. Unsurprisingly, with figures like that, acceleration is best described as steady, with the fastest version hitting 62 from rest in 13.2 seconds. It is based on a van though, so we can't expect much more. If you do want more speed though, there's an electric version on the way later this year. Annual updates have now become expected in the American car market and no more so than in the large SUV segment. Hyundai is the latest to succumb to the pressure of refreshing its take on the class for the 2023 model year, the Palisade receiving an array of changes inside and out. Taking pride of place at the front end is an enlarged grille following the trend set by many other manufacturers. For the new model, the chrome lining surrounding the grille has been dropped, making for an interesting merger with the headlights. The rest of the exterior design is more or less unchanged, bar some slightly sharper lines, keeping the big SUV looking fresh. It's from the driver's seat that the facelift really comes into its own. A higher resolution screen, massaging driver's seat and redesigned steering wheel make up the most notable changes to the 2023 Palisade. Many driver aids and infotainment systems have been added to the car as standard equipment. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Sirius XM and Bluetooth are all among the list of standard features. Additional driver aids have also joined the list of features included in the base price, with various collision avoidance and highway driving assists. As we've come to expect with Hyundai releases recently, the interior is coated in pleasingly luxurious materials. The third row of seats has heating capabilities as standard, while in the top of the range calligraphy trim level, that same row of seats can fold electrically. Powering this behemoth is a 3.8-litre V6, putting out 291 horsepower, with either front or all-wheel drive options available. The 8-speed automatic transmission can be overridden, thanks to the paddles on the steering wheel, though this is hardly a model that's going to be sent to Lap Indianapolis. But how does it compare to its sister car, the Kia Telluride? The funky design of the Telluride certainly sets it apart. Kia hasn't opted for the all-encompassing front grille, instead choosing to give it a more rugged design. The rough-and-ready philosophy continues when looking to the car's quoted towing abilities. 
The Kia manages to lug around 2.5 tonnes, while the Palisade is only rated for 2.3. With a simply laid out interior and more interesting styling though, it's the Kia that appears to be the more attractive offering of the three. Costing the same as the Hyundai, but with marginally more storage space, we think it leads the way in the large family SUV market. Join us after the break as we check out a newer Bath and the extraordinary BMW 7 Series. Coming up, the new electric Ford Transit and the BMW 7 Series, but first... The Abarth 595 has been with us for ages now. First released in the late 2000s as the Abarth 500, it's a loud, fast and fun hot hatch that's always put B-Road blasting before brands hatch lap times. There have been countless different versions and special editions over the years, and now there's yet another one. Fitting in with the somewhat confusing new naming structure, the latest special at Bath is this, the 695 Tributo 131. As the name suggests, it's been built to celebrate the legendary Fiat 131 at Bath of the 1970s and early 80s. An iconic rally car, the 131 won three World Rally Championships in 1977, 78 and 1980. Paying homage to the boxy, wide-arched Fiat, the new 695 Tributo 131 gets a host of special bits from Abarth parts bins. Essentially, it's the same as the Abarth 695 Anniversario that we saw in 2019 with extended wheel arches and pleasingly old-school adjustable rear wing. The wing, similar to that on the Lancia Delta Integrale, produces up to 42 kilograms of extra downforce. It does get some bespoke features though, including the bright blue two-tone paint job, an Alcantara dashboard and various silhouettes of the 131 dotted around the car. The familiar Sabelt seats get some unique blue trim and stitching. Apart from that, it remains largely the same as a standard 695 Competizione, meaning you get 178 brake horsepower from a boosty 1.4 litre motor. Performance is unchanged too, hitting 62 miles per hour from rest in 6.7 seconds and topping out at 140. Whichever a bath you go for though, you'll get something special. With their bucket seats and carbon fibre trim, every 695 really does feel like a baby supercar, especially when you hear the rebunctious noise from the tailpipes. For all we know, there could be another half a dozen special edition of baths before they go electric, but they're worth enjoying while they last. Jigger, jigger, jigger! It's not often that we feature vans on Auto Mundial, but when we do, it's because there's something special. Originally launched in 1965, the Ford Transit has been the workhorse of choice for many a tradesman for over 50 years. During its time on the market, it's been sold around the globe, amassing over 8 million sales and has earned the right to be called the best-selling van in Europe. Now, nearly 10 years into its fourth generation, the Transit's transition to electrification has begun. First came the full-size model, and now the Blue Oval has unveiled the E-Transit Custom. Dropping the internal combustion engine, E-Transit Custom gets an LED strip running along the top of the grille, distinguishing it from the diesel burning version. 
Aside from the added lighting on the front, the new electrifying van is exactly what it says on the tin. A transit custom with the engine replaced by an electric powertrain. The powertrain in question is said to have a targeted range of up to 236 miles. Though with development still going ahead, that could very much change by the time the new model reaches production. In fact, we haven't been told a great deal about its underpinnings. A three-pin socket running off the van's main battery will be located in the cargo area in the back, so your power tools will work even in the most remote of locations. Ford has said that three more electric commercial vehicles will be unveiled by 2024, with various Turnio variants set to get the electrification treatment. In fact, by 2026, the brand is hoping to reach 600,000 electric commercial vehicle sales. As for the e-transit custom, don't expect to see it on the road until the second half of 2023. The Mercedes S-Class, a synonym for luxury, technology and understatement. To most people, it looks like any other Merck saloon, yet it's a favourite of movie stars and world leaders alike. Now though, one of its long-standing competitors has been updated, and quite frankly, we don't think it'll be causing many sleepless nights over in Stuttgart. Now, if you're sitting down, we'll show it to you. Yep, this is the new BMW 7 Series, and you know exactly where we're going to begin with this one. There is simply no getting around the fact that this is, to put it kindly, a distinctive looking car. The front end is sure to invoke a response wherever it goes. For us, the initial reactions were a mixture of laughter, horror and outright confusion. This isn't the first time in recent years that we've felt the need to be so critical of BMW's styling, but the new 7 surely takes top honours in the What Were They Thinking Awards. But what do we know? According to BMW, two of its main markets, North America and China, love aggressive styling and lots of chrome, and the designers have certainly nailed that brief. Give your eyes a break from the complex front end and the rest of the car is perfectly inoffensive. In fact, we really rather like the rear end with its slim modern lights. Moving on though from the contentious and subjective topic of styling, the new 7 Series has an ace up its sleeve. Unlike Mercedes, which builds the ICE S-Class and the electric EQS, two completely different limos with different platforms and body shells, BMW has kept it simple. The new 7 Series is available with a lineup of internal combustion and hybrid powertrains or as an EV. The electric version is badged as the i7, and apart from a few small details, it, unfortunately, looks exactly the same. It'll be the only 7 Series available on launch in the UK later this year, with ICE versions to follow. A range topping M70 will join the lineup next year, but for now, the i7 gets two electric motors, producing a combined 536 bhp. Power is sent to all four wheels for a 0 to 62 time of just 4.7 seconds and a top speed of 149. The range is up to 388 miles, some way behind the EQS, but respectable nonetheless. In 2023, the i7 will be joined in the UK by a pair of straight six plug-in hybrid models. The 750E will get a combined 486 brake horsepower, while the M760E will get 563. Both come with all-wheel drive and will cover up to 50 miles on a charge. Sadly, Europe will miss out on mild hybrids and the V8740i, but a new diesel is on the way. The new 7 Series is a very big car. Indeed, it's grown in every way. It's longer, wider and taller than before, although the wheelbase has only increased by 5 mm. These new, bigger dimensions mean more space and it's here, inside the cabin, where the 7 really shines. 
The Audi A8 recently received an update, but the BMW looks so much more modern. The exterior may be challenging, but the interior is exquisite. There's an enormous options list containing everything from a 36-speaker audio system to an outrageous 31-inch screen that folds out of the roof for the rear seat passengers. The technology on offer boggles the mind and easily matches that on offer in any S-Class. Up front, the so-called BMW curved display combines a 15-inch digital instrument display with a 12-inch infotainment system with the latest iDrive system. For decades, the BMW 7 Series has been a limousine for those who enjoy driving themselves. Now it seems it's just as good for those who want to sit in the back. It may not be the best looking limo out there, but it's certainly the most interesting. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we take a look at a new Nissan Duke rally car.